Lord Exorcist Zygon summons the storms, lets it course through his body before releasing it into the surging wave of geists. The half dozen of them come apart in a spray of ectoplasmic mist. The Lord Exorcist turns and grasps Katia by the forearm, dragging the Evocator Prime to her feet. Rise, sister, our work is not yet done. Though her neck has been savagely mauled by spectral talons, Katia does not falter for a moment. Even as she rises, her storm stave whips around to smash into the face of a blade-limbed horror, blasting it backwards with a piercing shriek. That is the last of the night haunt. For now, those icon can hear rattling moans and clanking chains growing louder by the moment. The dungeon awakens, says Katia, pressing a hand to the wound in her neck. Blood bubbles around her fingers, but does not gush freely. It is a deep cut, but not a mortal injury. By now, the great necromancer servants must know what we seek. Katia is a strong soul, fearless and noble, an embodiment of everything that a hammer of Sigma should be. Sycon believes that one day she will rise to the highest echelons of the Sacrosanct Command, if she escapes this nightmare alive. The hammers of Sigma do not fail he says. Simple words, but all the reassurance that is needed. The evocator's remaining comrades form around her. Alnarius, the truth-teller, and the silent giant, Comestus. The last remaining warriors of Zygon's party, each of them bloodied and exhausted, but still filled with the quiet surety in their purpose here. Much has been sacrificed so that the Lord Exorcist and this small team might make it this far. Follow me, Zygon says, we are close. Advancing, they enter a vaulted chamber, whose walls are covered with row after row of narrow iron-spiked cages, each marked with Shaishan glyphs and occupied by wailing spirits who rage and thrash against their bindings to no avail. There are holes in the floor here and there, plunging pits from which emanate yet more agonising screams. This is no typical lair of the spectral dead, but a depraved city of torture and cruelty, a place where souls are flayed apart and shaped into forms too terrible to imagine. The Great Oubliette, it is called, a name to thrust an icy lance of dread into the heart of any mortal. Ahead rises an immense gate, wrought not from metal or wood, but from screaming soul stuff. Faces writhe and churn amidst its glowing surface, their being so filled with sorrow and agony, Sycon's heart aches in sympathy. Not every soul can be saved, he reminds himself. The thought does little to assuage his guilt. Stealing his spirit, the Lord Exorcist raises his stave high and brings it crashing down with a thunderclap that shakes the bones. A shockwave of null magic blasts forth from the golden casket mounted atop the gleaming rod. It strikes the gate like a cleaving axe, sweeping away the churning spirits and silencing their haunting cries. Beyond the breached gate there is a room, strangely organic in shape, like a hollowed-out ribcage. At its centre stands a glass sarcophagus twice the height of Zycon himself, hanging from heavy chains of rusted iron. The sarcophagus is filled with balefire, which flickers and dances across the walls, illuminating scores of arcane instruments, devices of dark necromantic purpose, whose functions Icon neither knows nor cares to contemplate. Within the angry flames of the sarcophagus, Zycon can see the prize for which his warriors have sacrificed so much, a dozen crackling bolts of golden energy crashing helplessly against the bonds of their burning prison. Kinsman, whispered Dalnarius, we have come for you. I pray we are not too late. She staggers as she crosses the threshold. Following her, Zycon is struck by the same wave of horror and grief, so intense that it registers as physical pain. Alnarius falls to his knees. Even Comestus mutters a prayer to Sigma and makes the sign of the comet. Only the Lord Exorcist does not flinch. He is no stranger to agonies of the soul. Sigmar's blood, whispers Alnarius. What has been done to them? Darker things than we can possibly imagine, says Katia. And these are but a few of the comrades whose souls have been claimed by Nagash. 
This dungeon spans a continent by the God King. Who knows what blasphemies the great necromancer is wreaking in its deepest levels? How can we know they are not tainted beyond hope? Says Comestus. Can spirits so damaged as these ever be reforged? That matters not, Sycon says, filling his words with a certainty he does not feel. We came here to recover our lost kin, and so we shall. They will be judged upon the anvil of apotheosis, not here, in this foul place. The Lord Exorcist steps forward, shielding himself in an orb of crackling lightning that repels the complex web of the death wards and curses of withering layered upon them across the chamber. He rests his redemption stave, the staff of his office, against the icy crystal of the sarcophagus, and begins to chant a liturgy of purification. He senses the essences of his own kind, and feels the distant flickering ember of hope still within them. Yet, the more desperately he reaches out, the tighter the web of agony ensnaring them becomes. This device is warded by the foulest magics, he says. We must shatter these curses if we are to free our comrades. Alanus and Ktia add their power to his own, while the giant Comestus moves to guard them. Already more geists are surging down from on high, passing clear through the walls of the fortress in search of intruders. Be swift, says Comestus, his eyes flashing icy blue as he enters his battle trance. His weapon crackles with storm energy, and he sets his feet to meet the spectral change. Zygon grits his teeth and calls upon every iota of his power, aware that he and his comrades only have a few minutes before the entire necropolis descends upon them. The demented howls of slasher geists echo around the stormcasts. Zykon can hear the crashing boom of Comestus's empowered weapons blasting ethereal foes apart, each blow filling the chamber with bright white light. His magic is too powerful, hisses Alnarius. There is a cry from the doorway behind him, and Zykon risks a glance backwards to see Comestus sinking to the floor, ragged spectres tearing at his throat and slashing at his belly with cruel cool blades. He is still alive, as they begin to take him apart. There is no time for subtlety now. Sycon smashes his stave against the surface of the shade glass sarcophagus, unleashing every ounce of the power within its celestium casket. The sarcophagus begins to shudder, cracks spider webbing across its surface. With a final shattering blast, the sarcophagus explodes into fragments, and a great tongue of balefire washes across the chamber, scorching Sycon's flesh with its malignant touch. He ignores the pain as the lightning spirits trapped within the crystal break for freedom, darting about the roof of the chamber like panicked birds. Come, brethren, the Lord Exorcist calls, raising his stave high. Your suffering is over. The tormented spirits are drawn to the soothing light of his stave's casket. Descending in a flash of energy, they seek refuge within its golden doors. Zygon mutters a word of command and the casket is once more sealed. Whether these tortured spirits can be redeemed or not, they will at least now return to Azir for judgment. Time to leave, says Alaris the truth-teller, turning to face the night-haunt who have finished savaging the fallen Comestus, and now spill into the chamber in their scores. Yet no sooner has he raised his sword than a black shape drops from the ceiling, grasping the evocator in pale spindly arms. Alnarius, cries Katia. But before she can come to her comrade's aid, there is a spray of bright arterial blood. The bent-backed horror embracing Onarius bears a torture rack across its shoulders, bedecked with instruments of rack and ruin. These flensing knives and hooked chains now sink into Onarius's flesh, and the warrior screams in agony as his body is torn to ribbons. Zygon sees another of these stooped nightmares emerge behind Evocator Prime, arms spread wide to grasp her. He sends forth bolts of celestial force that blast into the creature's form, it screeches and recedes into the shadows. But another of the spectral torturers drifts down from above, then another. They are aglow with deathly power, an aura of cruel hatred that sends rime frost crackling across the stones beneath Zygon's feet and over the surface of his armour. The spirit horde circles both the two remaining stormcasts, driven to a frenzy by the power of the spectral champions. What is left of Alnarius is hurled to the floor, armour and skin peeled away. As the evocator's body 
strikes the ground. It transforms into a sparkling bolt of lightning that crashes and bounces and bounces from the walls, unable to break free the grace of the heavens. It is joined by Comestus' essence. Neither can escape the fell wards that surround this place. This cannot all be for nothing, said Katia. The night haunt. Draw in. Zykon closes his eyes. He feels the etheric current building within him, a soothing fire that burns away all doubt and fear. Such power. The might of the heavenly storm is a force of both purification and destruction, capable of overwhelming even the strongest soul, if not channeled with caution. The Lord Exorcist abandons that caution now. He lets the lightning pour from him in a gushing torrent. It spills from his eyes, from his mouth, from the tips of his fingers. The shockwave of energy bursts across the chamber, hurling the spectral dead before it. The lesser wraiths judder and shriek as the magic of the heavens unmakes them. Even the necromantic aura of the four ghostly torturers is dimmed by Zykon's glorious light, and the hunch fiends recoil in fury. Zykon knows that even though the God King is with him, he cannot maintain this onslaught indefinitely. Already his skin is beginning to blister, and his eyes burn. There is but one chance now to fulfil his duty, one final sacrifice to be made. The casket of his redemption stave opens once more. Heeding its calls, the lightning spirits of Comestus and Alnarius cease their panicked flight, and make for the sanctuary of its magical cache. Cardia, gasps the Lord Exorcist. The Evocator Prime appears before him. He can see in her eyes, in the grim set of her jaw, she knows what he will ask. Take my staff. I will buy you only a little time. Be swift, and do not look back. My lord, there is no time for doubt, he gasps. Even as Icon, his words sound distant, weak. Even as the lightning continues to spill from him, the Lord Exorcist holds out his stave of office to the Evocator Prime. She drops her own storm stave and accepts his offering. Run, and she does. He knew that at this decisive moment she would not fail him. He sees her charge through the reeling storm of geists, her temple blade slicing through those that attempt to bar her path. She disappears from sight. Zykon knows that this is no certain sign of her escape, for the great oubliette is vast and filled with horror, and the night haunt now know that there are trespassers in their midst. He holds as long as he can, buying her all the time he can manage. Finally, unable to maintain his cascade of magic any longer, Zykon sags to his knees. No sooner has the lightning ceased than the nightmares once more creep back forth from the shadows. The four hunchback wraiths circle the exhausted Lord Exorcist, brandishing their flesh-ripping blades. A dozen souls for mine, Zykon says, each word a trial, a fair trade. One day my brethren will come for the rest, and we will tear this abomination down, stone by stone. The spectral torturers advance. Zykon sees his own helm reflected in the sheen of their weapons. There is a grotesque, rattling sound. The Lord Exorcist realises that it must be the wraith's cruel laughter, and feels a momentary pang of unease. Why are they not enraged by the spirits that have been ripped from their clutches? Yet Zykon is too drained to interrogate the thought further. All he can do now is place his trust in Almighty Sigma, who has never failed him. He closes his eyes. The blades descend. Agony, white hot and all consuming. Blades sliding and tearing beneath his skin, sinking into his eyes. Zykon knows that this is only the physical torment, and the worst will come when they begin to flay his very soul. Yet it is only pain. Pain can be endured. Failure cannot. And as his body is seized and lifted into the air, and the heavy manacles of iron close around his limbs, Lord Exorcist Zykon knows with blessed certainty. He has done all his god-king asked of him.